الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي لا يبزغ من حده القائدون ولا يحسي نعمه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون فترى الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالصخور ميدان عرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين عباد الله أصيبهم ونفسي بتقوى الله بتقوى الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويتيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم وعد الله الذين وعد الله المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ومساكن طيبة في جنات عدن ورضوان من الله ورضوان من الله أكبر ذلك هو الفوز العظيم هذه الآيات تريد أن تؤكد على ترابط المؤمنين والمؤمنات وعلاقاتهم مع الله ومع أنفسهم المراد بالولاية في هذه الآية هو ولاية الأخوة والمودة والنسرة إن تبيعة المؤمن هي تبيعة الأمة المؤمنة تبيعة الوحدة والتكافل والتضامن في تحقيق الخير والدفع الشعر شبه النبي صلى الله عليه وآله المجتمع المسلم بالجسد الواحد وبالبنيان يشد بعضه بعضا إنما يواجهون التحديات يواجهونها بموقع واحد حتى يسجلوا لأمتهم جميعا مجدا وكرامة واحتراما يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر هذه من أخص صفات المؤمنين التي يمتازون بها على المنافقين الذين يأمرون بالمنكر وينهون عن المعروف وقد فضل الله تعالى بهما أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وآله على سائر الأمم كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله إقامة الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة هم الذين يؤدون صلاتهم في شروطها وآدابها وخشوعها فيؤتون الزكاة ليعالجوا مرض الفقر والفساد وفي أموالهم حق للسائل والمحروم ثم يتحدث تعالى عن شيء أكبر من الجنة وأكبر من جنات عدن ومن الأنهار وهو رضوان من الله وهذا هو هدف المؤمن عندما يتكلم أو يسكت يؤيد أو يرفض ما يريد إلا مرضات الله إن المؤمن عندما يجاهد لا يجاهد لأجل الاستعمار ولا يجاهد لأجل السيطرة على العباد والبلاد 
والتوسع والعنصرية لأنها من أهداف المستكبرين والإرهابيين والمحتلين ولكن المؤمنون يجاهدون لأجل إعلاء كلمة الله وما يريدون إلا رضا الله سبحانه وتعالى ومن الناس من يشري نفسه ابتغاء مرضات الله وهي الهدف الوحيد للذين أتعوا الله وصاروا في طريق الله واختاروا أن يعيشوا كحزب الرحمن وليقاتلوا أحزاب الشيطانية رضي الله عنهم وردوا عنه أولئك حزب الرحمن هم الغالبون والمفلحون المخلصون والأحرار ويقول سبحانه وتعالى أفمن اتبع رضوان الله كمن باء بسخة من الله ما يجمع إنسان في قلب واحد رضا الله وسخة الله ما يستوي الأعمى والبسير ولا الظلمات والنور ولا الذل ولا الحروب ليس من جد واجتهد في الخيرات والأعمال الصالحات كمن أهمل من العبادات والتعات واستغرق في الفحشاء والمنكرات قال الإمام الصادق عليه السلام الروح والراحة في الرضا واليقين والهم والحزن أو الحزن في الشك والسخط الرضا ثمرة العلم واليقين والإيمان والامتحان عندما قال موسى بن عمران عليه السلام يا رب أخبرني عن آية مرضاتك فأوحله إليه يا موسى إن الرضاية في رضاك بقضائي وللذين يتبعون رضا الله ورضوان الله درجات في الجنة كما أن للذين اتبعوا سخة الله دركات في النار إن في الجنة مية درجة أعدها الله للمجاهدين في سبيله كل درجات درجتين ما بينهما كما بين السماء والأرض فإذا سألتم الله فاسألوه الفردوس فإنه أعلى الجنة ومنه تفجر أنهار الجنة وفوقه عرش الرحمن هذا من أحاديث الصحيحة وتسمى الوسيلة وهي درجة النبي صلى الله عليه وآله التي طلب منا أن نسأله أن نسألها له في أدعيتنا كما جاء في دعاء اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله الوسيلة والفذيلة والدرجة الرفيعة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته لا ننال هذه الدرجة إلا من خلال رضوان الله نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى للشهداء وللذحايا لكل الشهداء والذحايا وخاصة الشهداء الأخير الأبرار في بيروت مغفرة ورضوانا و نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يخاتبهم يخاتب أرواح الشهداء بقوله المبارك يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي عباد الله أسيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتباصوا بالحق وتباصوا بالصبر صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مذل له 
فمن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله أكرمه بالنبوة وجعله رحمة للعالمين اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك بحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاته وصل على وسيه وأخيه أمير المؤمنين وعلى الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة النساء العالمين وعلى صدق الرحمة الحسن والحسين سيدة شباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف القائم المهدي خجلك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم كن لوليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توى وتمتعه فيها طويلة برحمتك يا أحمى الرحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين صلي على To continue the discussion that we have before Ashura, reflecting on the qualities and characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, and finally focusing on the last three verses from chapter Al-Hashr, the whole Quran, that those verses teach us 18 qualities or 18 beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In general, the asma Allah are either asma al-jamaliya, the beautiful name, or al-asma al-jalaliya. And if you look at the Quran, there are almost 200 names of Allah mentioned in the Quran. But then the Mufassirin, they categorize some of those verses as Al-Asma Al-Husna. That in general, they mention 99 Asma Al-Husna, 99 beautiful names of Allah. That out of this uh, 99, uh, most of them are mentioned in the Quran. 55 Asma al Jamaliya and 22 Al Asma al Jalaliya and 22 names are uh, common between Al Jamaliya and Jalaliya and altogether 85 of these names and qualities mentioned in the Quran and the rest of them are in different ahadith and and traditions. <coughs> Continuing the verses at the end of Surah Al-Hash, يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ We have this in Surah Al-Hash that everything in the heavens and the earth glorify Allah. There is another verse that says in different chapter, يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَعْرِ So we have مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ usually uh, refers to human beings and the angels. الْقُوَى الْعَقِلَ The intellectual beings that they know they are praising and glorifying Allah. But Ma'af al-Samawat includes everybody. Even the animals, the trees, stones, everything. Ma'af al-Samawat, everything in the heavens and the earth is glorifying Allah. Now, some of us, like human beings, when we say SubhanAllah, it's tasbih. Al-Maqali is expression. But the rest of the beings, they 
may glorify God not through saying it the way that we say it in human language, but a tasbih al-hali, mush magali. Al-hali, through their actions, the way that they are operating under the laws of the universe. وَإِنْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّرُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ Everybody is saying, Subhanallah. But we know only our own language. When we say Subhanallah, we hear it and we understand it. But when animals say Subhanallah, or trees say Subhanallah, or oceans say Subhanallah, we don't get it. There might be a day that even in the atom, new discovery that is more than just those two, three parts. Maybe there is another part that we didn't discover, different language. That even that is saying, subhanAllah. Now, if there is someone like Suleiman, Suleiman, the prophet of God, he knows the language of even the animals, he understands. So when they talk, he knows what they are talking about. وَوَرِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ دَاوُودَ وَقَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عُلِّمْنَا مَنْ تَقَطَّيْرُ We know the language of the birds even. You know the famous story in the Quran that when uh, Suleiman is marching with his army and the head of the ants is saying that, go man to your houses. To save areas, this army is coming and they are going to crush you. They don't understand. And Suleiman started laughing that the end is saying that these guys don't understand. They crush you unintentionally. But he understand. He understand the language of the ants. This is in the Quran. He understand the language of even Hudhud. وَتَفَقَّدَ الطَّيْرَ فَقَالَ مَا لِي لَا أَرَى الْهُدْهُدَ أَمْ كَانَ مِنَ الْغَائِبِينَ The language of Hupu. How he knows? Where is the Hudhud? They said, looks like he's not there. After that he said that if he did it without permission, then he's going to be punished. Where is he? وَجِئَتُكَ مِنْ سَبَئٍ بِالنَّبَئٍ يَقِينَ Hudhud came back and said, I'm bringing you important information from a far country called Yemen. إِنِّي وَجَدْتُ إِمْرَأَةً تَمْلُكُهُمْ وَأُوْتِيَتْ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَلَهَا عَرْشٌ عَذِيمٌ Long story that the Hudhud explains that there is a queen and they worship the sun and they live in darkness, and they need guidance. And then Suleiman sent an ambassador, and the, the queen is a very wise lady. SubhanAllah, the Quran is giving us indication 4,000 years ago. This is the time of Suleiman, Suleiman 4,000 years ago. At that time, there was a lady who was the president. Can you imagine? The potential of woman that the Qur'an is talking about. And then the Qur'an shows that this lady was so wise. When she, in a very democratic way, she talks with her community and saying that there is a king and is a serious. There might be a war. What do you think? What should we do? They said, well, we are ready. We are powerful. We are ready to fight. But this lady was wise and she was not excited. So, oh, Okay, let's go and fight. She said that, you know, when the, the kings, they attack a country, there's so much damage, so much corruption. War is not joking. We have to be careful when, when we say, let's fight. And then she said, let us test who is this king. Is he looking for money? Is he looking for domination? She sent Suleiman a gift, a very special material gift. And Suleiman Labi said, we are not looking for material. Then she realized this is something more important. And finally, the longest story that she uh, 
went to Jerusalem and uh, her ash was already there and she submitted, she became uh, faithful and she joined Solomon and she gained both dunya and akhirah. So with her wisdom of not getting involved in destructive war, she saved her soul and her community and they got the dignity both in this world and in the eyes of God. And this story of a lady in the Quran shows the wisdom that all the kings and presidents in the end of the world should learn from this lady, a woman of wisdom, woman of responsibility, that she consulted with his army, but at the end she used her own brain and she realized what is right and what is wrong. So when we go through this ayat al tasbih that all are glorifying God, even the stones, even the, the, the plants, everything in the heavens and the earth, we realize the glory of Allah, the greatness of Allah. And we appreciate all this asma al husna. So let me conclude with that, that the reason Quran mentions all these names is for us to learn and gain those qualities. If Allah is alim, we have to be alim. Huwa rahim, kun rahiman. Huwa kareem, dignified, be, be kareem. Huwa hakim, kun hakima, kun khayran. Kun samian, kun basiran. Kun raufan, kun shakuran. These are qualities of Allah. Kun ghafuran, kun salaman, kun sadiqan. Kun saburan, kun fa'alan, kun qadiran. Kun wadudan, kun mu'minan. Kun nuran, kun hadiyan. If you go through all of these names of Allah, His guidance, His light, He is loving, He is close, He is active. He is strong, He is patient. He is truthful, He is peace, He is forgiving. He is grateful. He sees, He hears, He understands, He is good. He is wise, He is knowledgeable. That means that we have to taqallabu bi akhlaq Allah. Go through all these qualities. Kun hannanan, kun dalilan, kun mubarakan, kun muhibban, kun muhsanan, kun jawadan. If these qualities of Allah, if He is generous, if He is blessing, if He is guiding, then it is up to us to go through these qualities. But unfortunately, human beings, out of this freedom, many times he abuses this freedom. He says, no, I don't want to be image of God. I don't want to be Khalifatullah, deputy of divine on this earth. He chose to be the Luman Jahula, evil, oppressive, and ignorance. This is why we see explosion in Lebanon. This is why we see war in Iraq and Syria. If people wanted to represent Sifatullah wa Asma'ullah, we didn't have this mess. This mess exists because instead of kun aliman wa basiran wa hakiman wa khabiran wa birran wa raufan wa adlan, they choose to be jahulan, dhaluman, kanudan, kafuran, zaliman, mufsidan. This is the problem. This is the problem. An explosion happened in Beirut a few days ago in front of the Islamic Republic uh, cultural mission. The Zionist newspaper started writing that now there is a bridge between the Saudi and the Sahyuni. They consider that explosion as a connection that they came together now. They came together. Somebody told me why Sayyid Khamenei said, you know, Abbara Anhum, 
عن القلب النجس الوحشي Why you said that? This is not like a very respectful kind of expression. And I said, you know, he is a, a religious leader, a political leader. You can, you know, call his office and, you know, ask directly. I don't want to speak for, for people and be a spokesman. But just to be fair, just to be fair, you are dealing with a guy called Netanyahu that even he called President Rouhani a wolf in a cloth of, of sheep. When, when this man, President Rouhani, speaks, he even doesn't mention their name. He doesn't even say like Netanyahu, he doesn't mention too much even Israel. He just talks in general. But this guy, is not satisfied with anything. He is coming to the United States to make fitna between the President and the Congress. Can you imagine how insulting it is? Who are you to come and to use the Congress against administration? Then right away he goes to Russia and want to, you know, raise Russia against Iran. And then to, to France and to use French president against Iran. What is the appreciation? What else you want from even America? After every, everything, unconditional support. You get whatever you want from the United States. But still not happy. And still try to make fitna and problem in this country. And using APEC to divide the Congress and use them. And unfortunately, Congress, many of the people and congressmen ready for sale. They are there for sale. And they sell their souls for some votes and sell their souls for some money. And this is how it happened. So now, when I said Khamenei I said, or somebody else, somebody should tell Netanyahu, stop. Unfortunately, nobody has the nerve to say it. Not in this country, nowhere else. No one has enough nerve to tell Netanyahu, please shut up, stop it. Enough is enough. If you want to solve any problem, Go and solve the Palestinian problem as lasted for 60, more than 60 years. You already have a problem. Don't try to solve the Iranian problem. Solve your own problem. Solve your own illegal occupation and illegal settlement. Stop it. It's internationally illegal. Everybody said it's illegal. Stop it. Stop your terrorism. But they exactly know this. They want to change the subject. They want to talk about Iran, Iran, Iran. So nobody talks about occupation, nobody talks about Palestine, nobody talks about illegal settlement. They are trying to change the subject and, and confuse the world. But believe me, even now the negotiation is going on in Geneva. If Iran comes with a statement and says, we do all you want. You want to come to Iran and even destroy all this nuclear facilities like in, in Syria, deal with that like chemical weapon in Syria and, you know, put an end to everything. We are ready. Do you think they would stop even if Iran said so? Because they are looking just for war and headache and no matter what, they don't want to live in peace because if things are quiet in logic, then somebody would ask about occupation, somebody would ask about settlement, somebody would ask about more than 200 Israeli nuclear missiles. These issues are going to raise if we live in a normal situation. But when situation and conditions are crazy, then they can, you know, fly from one branch to another branch, and nobody is going to talk about that. So, so your APEC problem that even somebody like Thomas Friedman, he is Jewish. He is the one who writes up it for a New York Times. He 
He is Jewish and very serious about Israel, but at the same time, he is a, a professional journalist and man of knowledge. He was in Lebanon in 1982, the tragedy of Safra and Shatila and invasion of, uh, you know, Israeli invasion of Lebanon. He was there. Few days ago, he wrote an article and offered in uh, in New York Times, and the title was, What About Us? What about us as Americans? <coughs> He's saying that you think that we Americans are just hired as, as attorneys to go and fix the, the Israeli and the Saudis interests? Are we attorney for them? Or there are some interests also for the United States. What about our own interests? If our president is trying to put an end to terror the four of Cold War between Iran and the United States, who is Israel to come and put its own interests ahead of American interests and say no to us? I'm saying it's getting so ugly that even somebody like Thomas Friedman from New York Times is irritated with this nonsense and saying enough is enough, show some respect. But now the question is that how come really can the Jews and APEC can do what they do? Well, because they learn it. And sometimes that I listen to some other communities, I'm really, uh, you know, uh, depressed of the, the situation of our own woman. Here in Michigan, the Jewish community this year, I heard just this week from one of the big uh, you know, Jewish leaders in the area, he said this year so far, we collected $40 million donation from individuals in Jewish community. Only in Michigan. And Michigan economy is worse than anywhere else. You can imagine from New York and other states how much they collect. In addition to the money that this country gives to Israel, but most of it is spent in the United States to buy the congressman, to buy every voices and every vote. So it's not a surprise that looking at Umm al-Islamiyya and you see the Marad al-Jahli wal-Fagri wal-Asabiyya wal-Fasad wal farga all this disruptive disease all over. They killed the guy in Syria last week. They said, well, he made a prayer we thought he was Shia. Are you serious? You kill somebody because during his prayer, he is already Muslim and he's praying to God. You say that. But when he was praying to God, it like sounded like it is a Shia dua because he mentioned like maybe an you Ali know, or Imam Hussein or somebody, then they realized that he was one of the criminals from themselves, one of the commanders of another criminal group. They said, well, sorry, you know, we were not aware of that. God would forgive us because we are, you know, Allah khata. We just made a mistake and, you know, God knows our intention and no problem. We are, we are okay. And then they said, now in, in Beirut there is like a bread between a Sahiuniya and Saudi, it made them, you know, united. The Saudis, they say that the Saudi citizens leave Lebanon. And even at that time, with all this power, they are saying that, how come that Reis al Jumhuriya Michel Soleiman, for example, goes to Iranian embassy to, to express condolences? They, they feel even jealousy for that. That after three years of all the support and money and military and might and propaganda to destroy Syria, and they failed. And I said, oh, because some Shabab from Lebanon or from Iraq, that is the way that we could end. Are you serious? You got all your youth from all over the world, all al Qaeda, this satanic organization. With all its evilness was mobilized for the last three years, and all the Saudi and Qatar and Khaliji money was used, and all the Western power 
And now we are saying the reason that we are failing because there are some from Hezbollah, there are some from uh, some from Iraq, you know, they, they want to defend, say, the Zainab. That is the reason. This is why saying, They have money, they have power, but they don't have Izzah, they don't have dignity. And the other ones, if they don't have this money and power, but they have dignity and they have Izzah, and they say, Hayat minna dhillah. They have Izzah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, yes, if the Jewish community can do this, because of organization, because of education, we shouldn't do the evil stuff, but we should do the right things. How can we do the right things that our own man community don't suffer from what we are suffering now? We need to have all the qualities of Allah that I mentioned. All those asma'ullah should be manifested in our akhlaq, in our family, in our community. More education, more organization, more cooperation, more participation. Yes. We cannot do this even during the Ashura. Some of us ignore this Ashura. We are continuing our In the night of Ashura, some people still, you know, they cannot leave the Argila stuff. And some other, they go and do the Tatbir. Those of us either ignoring Ashura, or if we don't want to ignore Ashura, we do the opposite. And then neither group can do this job. We can go nowhere if we ignore it, or if we choose the wrong way, exaggerating and doing it in a wrong way. So we need as a community to understand that only Asma'Allah, only education, only togetherness can help us. And we need to start from our masajid. We need to start from our masajid. We need to make the community strong through making our organization, especially the masajid, strong. We need to make commitment. It's very unfortunate. Sometimes I talk with our community members that look at this house of wisdom, a humble house of Allah. It is a result of almost 18 years of non-stop work. It's ready now. Come and run it. Some totally ignore and some may come, but after one or two times showing no commitment. So how can we really and then the result is what? The result is when we have an election even to choose a mayor from the community or a member of the city council from the community. Either nobody goes to vote or some of us vote and we trust others more than we trust ourselves. How can we trust? How can we win? If we live in an opportunity that Americans, they don't care about, many of them, they don't care about ethnicity and color. Many of them didn't do. If we show quality, they vote. But then sometimes you see that we ourselves don't appreciate and don't trust ourselves. And then we expect that the others come and vote for us and choose us. How can happen. So we need brothers and sisters to show membership and activity and participation and get together and brainstorm and talk about real subject, talk about the future of community, have an agenda for our community. What do we want for the future of our children, for the future of our faith in this country? What are our priorities? What are the important things that we have to reflect and Think about it. What are fundamental needs in the community? How can we learn from the experience of other communities? Many times these Jewish leaders, Christian leaders, they come to us of wisdom, they talk with me. We sit down and we talk for two, three hours. And then I say, my God, how can we do all of these things? They did great things in their communities. We need to do these things. But there is nobody. And the chef by himself cannot do it. Even if you have the prophet but no ansar and no ashab, they cannot do it.
So let us start from bringing even our children. Let your kids, even if they are one year or two years, be the member of the mosque. On the last night of Ashura, two nights after Ashura, I was surprised when I asked the audience, not too many people at that night in, in auditorium, and I said that, I want to see that you make your kids, in the name of your kids, make a membership to House of Wisdom. And I did it myself. My little kids, and even the oldest one, Hassan, you see that he is coming and all the time volunteer his time and take care of the sound system and, and the camera, and he never talks, and you don't feel that even he exists. He does it with, with humbleness and without any expectations. Because if you start it from early years, when they are 20, when they are 25, they get back and they are in the mosque, and then other communities come. How many members do you have? He said, 10 members. And I was like, oh, are you serious? You have 10 members? Even in the church, they have 300, 400 members. So let us make more members. Let us be a stronger, strong community, a strong organization. Then they cannot laugh at us. Then when it comes to election, we are strong. When it comes to the Congress, we are strong. When we come to the decision making for this country or Middle East, we are on the side of justice. And we need to, brothers and sisters, take these matters for the sake of God seriously. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us. Allahumma aslih ma fatada min umur al-Muslimin. Allahumma gayr suwa halina bi husn halik. Allahumma la tusallit alayna man la yakhafuka wa la yarhamana. Allahumma shfi mardana wa arda hawaijana wa kukka asrana. وتغمد أرواح شهدائنا في العراق والسوريا وخاصة شهداء الأخير في بيروت بالرحمة والمغفرة والرضوان عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وإلى الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله